All right, guys, so I just wanted to put a little video out there for you. Um, the reason why I'm putting this video out there particularly is because I couldn't find a video on my issue. Um, it seemed that, that like there's not a lot of content out there on washing machines and things of that sort. Washing machine dryers, all that type of deal. So I wanted to put this out there because I had to do a lot of research to come up with the issue. Well, yeah, to figure out the issue. Um, the problem I was having with this washing machine was a grinding noise when it was um, time to agitate the clothes. So it was spinning okay, um, filling up the water and all that, no problem. But when it came time to agitate the clothes, you would hear a grinding noise. Um, pretty much every time the agitation or the washing wheel would spin, it would be a grind noise. So it would be like, nah, 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 nah. pretty much. You know? <laughs> That's my best um, rendition of a uh, washer wheel grinding. Um, so I researched the issue when a lot of people were saying like um, the professionals, all that kind of stuff, they were saying pretty much that it's your spluck, spluck wheel or gear, which is pretty much, um, it's underneath the, it's pretty much just a clutch. So your actuator engages the clutch when it's time for it to agitate the clothes. So it could have been the actuator or it could have been the, the I'm just gonna say the clutch, but it's a splutch. Splutch, that's what it is. So yeah, when it's time to agitate or whatever whatever it's going through, you know, that actuator is responsible for putting it in the gear or taking it out of the gear so that to, so that the tub can spin or so that the washer wheel can agitate. So I lifted up the washing machine. It's fairly easy to get to. It's just a, a let me see, like a shield over top of it. You use two two bolts. The um, sorry, yes, two bolts. Let me get the actual size that I was using. A lot of stuff is standard, but I use metric for everything pretty much. So I use a 6.5. They get, you know, the bolts off on the washer and dryer and all that kind of stuff. Um, I believe it's 6.5. I get the two mixed up because I had to work on the dryer too. So it could have been 6.5 for the dryer. But I think it's 6.5 for a lot of the bolts on the washing machine as well. So anyway, um, I pulled that down. I inspected the splutch gear, the splutch, the splutch clutch. <laughs> I inspected it and it looked like it had its teeth, you know, it looked to be in fairly good condition. I would assume that if it was bad that the teeth would be ate up. But both the teeth on the splutch and the gears that are supposed to be driving look good. So I was like, this this doesn't sound like this could be the issue. You know, the actuator was working, you know, it was going in the gear and all that. So I was just thinking like it sounds like it's on the top and I'm assuming that it's the wheel, you know. But I couldn't find no videos out there talking about this, um, this washer, um, this wheel washer. Yeah, it's disgusting. Um, so what I actually ended up doing was simply reading some forums and stuff like that. And I found some that hinted at the issue, but the issue that they were hinting at was the transmission, um, the splines on the transmission being bad, which is pretty much that um, rod that comes up through the center. Um, it has the, it has a rod and it has splines that you know, these teeth pretty much grab onto. So, it's a 716 bolt that goes, that holds this washer wheel on. It's a little cap on it. You just pop it off with a flathead or something like that. So, after you um, pop that cap off, you take off that 716 bolt. And you're going to have to, like, kind of finagle your... What did I use? I used the... Um, I use trim tools, but that is just pretty much like plastic prying tools used for getting like your trim off your car and all that kind of stuff. So I pretty much stuck it down in there. I used the one that was about that wide. 
so it's pretty sturdy so I can actually lift up under there and stick my hands down there and kind of like force it up a little bit. And I will do that with both sides, forcing it back and forth. It took a little minute to get it all. But eventually if you keep wiggling and wiggling and wiggling and prying at the same time, it'll eventually come up. Um, so here are the, let's see. It has little splines in there and the splines, they didn't appear to be in good condition. You know, they, you can almost not really feel them like that. So I was, it clicked at me like maybe the, the, maybe the rod is not engaged in this because the Tifa ate up. You know, it can it could as well been this as well, which once you pull this washer wheel off, yeah, once you pull this washer wheel off, I'm trying to get the focus here. Okay, so once you pull this washer wheel off, underneath you'll find this right here. One second. Okay, so once you pull this washer wheel up, underneath you'll have this um, drive hub. And this is also, again, responsible for, you know, agitation and things of that sort. So once you pull the washer wheel up, you pull this drive hub up as well. It'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, six screws. So you want to pretty much use like a screwdriver, flathead, um, pretty much to pry against the hub um, center and it's lock and tap. <laughs> the watch is going crazy. I got to um, adjust the wheels on it. But anyway, so you pull this lock and tab out and you'll have access to all the screws. Take the screws out and you might have to pry a little bit to get it up, but that should come out as well. You want to replace both of those. It could have been one of them. It could have just been a washer wheel. Um, but I just, for good measure, I took out both of them. Um, the teeth on that one didn't look too good, but it looked like they might have still been able to grab, but I don't want that to be the issue when you know and I replace the washer wheel and it's, you know, then I gotta go back in and change that hub. So. I would say good practice is to change both of them. These are inexpensive enough. You wanna go with a quality one cause you don't want those um, teeth to eat up on a new one. So go with one that's similar um, OEM spec so that you can have a good experience. Cause there's a lot of torque, you know, from that thing going like this. You know, you got, it's only hold on to plastic. The plastic is the only thing that's holding on. So all it takes is a little bit of play and you know, it'll start stripping those teeth out. So you want to go with OEM. Um, the good thing about the washer wheel that I replaced it with, it actually had metal splines, metal um, teeth in the inside so that it can grab onto that metal wheel and it won't wear down as easily as the plastic does. So that was another good thing. So that's, that's what you're working with right there pretty much. Um, I'm happy with it. Um, I just wanted to get that out there. Sorry about the quality. I'm trying to get to some other work. I'm just trying to get this out there real quick, you know, to help people. Because, <laughs> you know, it took me a while to figure it out. But, you know, I did. And I'm happy. Um, and I hope this will make someone else happy as well. All right, guys. Well, like, comment, subscribe, share. All that type of stuff. Whatever you do. However you do. Just make sure you do it. I'll get at you. Peace.